Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas, and today I have with me Vivek Sablani, CEO at Wizard Analytics. Vivek, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? It's going fantastic, Tony. Nice to meet you, and uh, thank you for having me. Awesome. Very, very, thank, you for, thank you for coming. Uh, so just before we start recording, we, we were talking about the weather and, and the, the Midwest, which where I happen to be right now. Uh, and that we both are Atlanta-based, but I'm not there right now. Uh, I am curious, uh, how was the summer in, 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 in Atlanta when, when we had the, the hottest July in history? I, I skipped it. I was there in Buenos Aires, but I can only imagine what Atlanta was like. I also skipped it. So my second home is Jamaica, and I often spend about three, four months out of the year there. Okay, but perfect. Things as hot as Atlanta, from what I understand. <laughs> Uh, K Kingston or, or, or uh, what part of Jamaica? Montego Bay. Oh, okay. I've been to Montego Bay. Beautiful. Yes. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, are, you, are you a scuba diver? No, my brother is. I'm, I, I just snorkel on top while he's down in the Caribbean. Okay. okay. The, the, if you spend a lot of time in the Caribbean, definitely worth picking up. Uh, so, so Vivek, uh, we always give the, the, the guests a chance to give the elevator pitch. What, what is Wizard Analytics? So uh, our flagship product, SOV Wizard, around which we built this company, is a, an Excel native tool that structures unstructured data for underwriters. That's it, and it's, it's, that's short of an elevator pitch because that's how fast our product is. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so I actually clarified before we started recording on what you guys meant by SUV. So SUV as, as in statement, of values, right? So, 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 basically, a property underwriting, like the kind kind that Nick Lamparelli's uh, old company does, where you might have hundreds of locations, uh, comes in on an Excel file. Now, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a prop I, I'm I'm a former middle market underwriter. I, I I wasn't a property specialist. When when something had a lot of locations more than, I can't remember the exact amount, 10 million in, in, in total value, uh, kind of sent that part of the, of the policy to a property specialist, uh, or to a property, property owner and consultant. So I haven't dealt with it myself. But my experience was that, that, that the property data came in an Excel, that it, it was pretty structured. So where, where is it that, that it becomes a problem? Relatively speaking, it is structured. But because there is not a single standard out there, and there are multiple standards out there, they end up being unstructured from a technology point of view because you want the data arranged in the exact same format for every SOV across the industry. And there is no single such format. Okay. So, okay, perfect. That, 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 that makes sense. Um, so, so basically, my guess is that what the carriers are doing historically is data comes in and then my UA, my, pro, my, my, my uh, processing team spends a bunch of time getting hundreds of locations into the system uh, in a very inefficient way. So, so how, how does, does SOV, SOV Wizard solve that? Okay, so first of all, uh, SOVs can be tens of thousands of locations, not just hundreds and the TIVs can be in billions. And they, I'd say over 85, 90% of all the SOVs come in Excel format. There was a time where before the 1980s, we'd get them in paper formats, but the industry has evolved since then. You know, since the advent of computing, we get them in Excel because Excel is the primary choice to tabulate a finite number of insurable assets. However, the problem is, there's so many unknown or unstructured formats out there that there's not a single tool that's accurate, comprehensive, that can deal with all types of SOVs and structured them into a consistent format. So I worked in the insurance industry for about 17 years before I started my own company. Uh, this is a problem that's very close to my heart that I was often frustrated with and I, believe it or not, created this tool out of frustration as an accident. When I realized what I had done and others realized, they suggested I leave the, the employer I was with and start a company around it, and that's what I did. Okay. So, so it, it, it looks like on LinkedIn, so basically, like Lamparelli, you, you are a catastrophe modeler by trade. Correct. 
Okay, so, so yeah, it's like, in catastrophe remodeling, you, yeah, you're dealing with ten to, tens of thousands of, of locations. Uh, so, so you built kind of the, 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 uh, the draft version, the, 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 not the draft version, the, 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 uh, the MVP That's right. of, 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 the, of the system on your own. Initially, uh, yes. To, to, now make it's own, on to, to, to make your own life easier. That's right. Okay, so, so I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I built the tool I wish I had, and uh, I would introduce myself as a catastrophe modeler maybe three or four years ago, but now you can say I'm a mix of a software engineer and a catastrophe modeler because one of the things I grew frustrated with in all the past companies I worked for was educating the software engineer on insurance domain expertise. And finally, I gave up, and I figured it's probably easier to educate myself on how to engineer software, and <laughs> I wrote the code myself. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I am uh, definitely partial uh, towards insure techs that, that were created by one of us to solve a problem that really existed, right? The, the first generation of insure techs had a lot of, of, hey, this is a cool tech toy. Where can we apply it in insurance? With a cool tech hammer. Where, where, where can I apply it to an insurance nail? And, and in many cases, there just it wasn't a real need, right? Really cool technology with no real need. Uh, the current generation of InsureTech, tons of InsureTechs created by, by people like yourself who were frustrated uh, by the lack of a tool uh, because the problem really did exist. Uh, so so you, you refer to it, uh, uh, the tool is now on steroids. That's right. Tell, tell me about it. Tell, tell me, like, like what, what's the difference between the tool when you built it and what is commercially available to, to today through Wizard Analytics? All right, so let's say an SOV has about 40 columns of data. The initial tool that I built, you'd have to sit there and make 40 clicks and you know, map each column of your raw data into uh, a bucket that was fixed in some standard table that we defined. And then once you get all the columns mapped correctly, you have your data at least semi-structured, and then it's about changing the data formats for each of those columns and getting them into an acceptable format that your um, database can accept. The difference with how we do it today is it's one click, or at most three or four clicks, and it takes care of it. There's an AI ML component to it where uh, it automatically picks up or recognizes each of the columns in the raw data. It then transforms the data types into the correct acceptable formats, and you're done. I often compare SOVs to golf courses. I've actually written an article on this where I say there are par three F SOVs, par fours, par fives, and uh, you need a couple of shots to get there at least, but with SOV Wizard, you can be sure that you're scoring eagles or at least birdies all of the time because it's a self-learning tool. So the more it is used, the st smarter it gets. One of the biggest problems, Tony, with the tools that I evaluated before I got frustrated and built this one was that um, there's so many unknown, unknown formats out there that you can teach a machine what to do. It's almost like, um, here's an, uh, an, an analogy I use in one of my other articles. You can teach a machine to sew anything, but you need to uh, straighten the yarn before you can do that. And SOVs are like tangled wool. And how do you deal with that? How do you teach a machine you know, what anomalies there are in the data or how uh, unstructured it is so it can recognize what are the transformation steps to get it into an acceptable format. Well, we have a strong philosophy of AI with a human in the loop. So the, the approach in very simple terms that we've taken is we let the machine do what it does. We let AI and ML come in and take a stab at how to structure that data. But then before you're finished, a human has to review that. They have beautiful dashboards where they can quickly review or assess what the machine has done and if they find any mistakes in it, and because it's a self-learning tool, the mistakes diminish over time, they can make corrections very quickly. It's like a pipes to buckets concept. If we have fixed 40 fixed buckets where this data is flowing in, and the machine were to get 39 of them right, but one of them wrong, a user can make one simple click and correct that. When a user does that, the machine learns. So that next time that user or any other user encounters that same unstructured format, they don't have to make that one extra click. So that's the idea behind it in a nutshell. Okay, that, that, that makes a ton of sense. 
what, 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 what is the integration like? So, so okay, you're, you're solving the problem on the, on the intake. Mm -hmm. How does it connect with air or whatever I'm using to, to model? So we currently export CSV files for AIR. I used to work at AIR. Um, back in the day, they used to do Uniseed files. We've come a long way since then. Those were uh, comma separated value or CSV files that had to be structured in a certain way. If uh, the state column was the 13th column, then you had to have 12 commas before it. And if you had city instead of state, it would get confused. Um, those were the days I used to structure this data and, and you can imagine be very, very frustrated with this. So I started thinking about this problem way back when we were preparing Uniseed files to import into the AIR model, for example. Uh, today, it, you know, it's much easier. You can point that AIR model to a, a set of CSV files and import that data. But um, with our tool, you can export those with two clicks. One click to structure the data, another click to export AIR CSV files. So in two clicks, you have uh, model-ready files that you can import. Another thing you could do with our tool, uh, this is customization that we do for some of our customers, is to integrate the APIs that vendor models offer so that you don't have to make that second click. You can send that data directly from that Excel file because ours is an Excel native tool. Once it's cleaned, point it to whatever vendor model you're using, wait for it to finish analyzing the, the uh, potential losses, and then the loss information comes back into that same Excel file where you started with the raw SOV to begin with. So that's one of the integrations. We also have other third-party integrations, so it's not just structuring unstructured, unstructured data. We can uh, augment or enrich that data. Oftentimes, SOV data is either incomplete or very often it's inaccurate. So our tool is connected to several third-party APIs, um, and we're like Switzerland for uh, API uh, hosting where we can host any third-party uh, database as long as they offer an API, link it to it so if you wanted to enhance your insurance to values to get correct replacement costs so that you can have accurate pricing, you can link it to third party uh, data providers that help you do that. If you want to get hazard scores or get COPE information that might be missing from your SOV, you can do that with a click and just augment that data from multiple sources and it, you, there's a nice interface where you get to choose, it's like my kids ask me who's your favorite child? And I, I never want to answer that question. So we stay away from which data source is better than the other, but we present all data sources to the user to be able to pick and choose. Okay, so, so much more than, than, than just data structure and cleanup. Uh, it, it actually enhances based on what subscriptions you have, basically. Yes, and you, the end user doesn't have to have those subscriptions directly. We are a reseller for several third-party data APIs. Uh, if you have your own license with them, then we can plug in your API key and you deal with your uh, data provider as you do now. Or if you don't, the benefit of having SOV Wizard is, is that it's a one-stop shop, uh, one marketplace where you can shop around from several data providers and pick and choose on a one single SOV basis rather than having annual contracts with, with each of these third parties. Well, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, what's, what's, what's the pricing like? For, for, for the tool? Is, is it a by the use? Is it a by the license? How big of a commitment do we, do we have to, to get to, to try it out? So when I was in the market and I was looking at third-party uh, service providers who did this manually, that's the most accurate way of doing, doing it, uh, pricing was uh, in the, the you know, tens of dollars, if not over 100 per SOV. And with us, you can do the same with a fraction of the cost. Uh, the other... Uh, trouble I had was there were these automated tools. That's actually when I decided to build my own tool, is um, they were, you know, no human involvement, so the cost of goods sold is cheaper for these companies that offer these black box solutions where uh, you might email an SOV and get your CSV files in 30 seconds. Uh, they were not very complete, so uh, those were much lower in pricing, maybe 10, 20 percent of the manual uh, service companies, the, the BPOs. Uh, so we're somewhere in between that, and uh, we have uh, significant discounts for our early adopters. We're building other third-party tools uh, to integrate into our software. We're building integrations with our own uh, web-based softwares, like the next one we're working on right now is called Underwriting Wizard. 
uh, where an underwriter can use this as a, as a, a medium to exchange the SOVs with our internal wizards. So we also offer the data cleansing services offshore. So it's a mixed bag of uh, software and services, and depending on what you license, uh, we work with each customers to each of our customers to to customize the pricing somewhere between the two. We, we we like to believe we're the most accurate, most comprehensive, most transparent solution, uh, and we try to price it closer to the, the all other automated solutions where. There's no human involvement, but like I said earlier, this does have some human involvement, and uh, it, it varies based on whether you use, you use our offshore services or wizards to do the data cleansing for you, or if you just license our software to clean SOVs at the underwriter desk level within two minutes or less. Okay, so clean up your SOVs within two minutes or less, uh, and enhance them with whatever data you 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 want uh, so it looks like like the company's been around for a couple of years. Uh, in any great customer success stories, and uh, you can share the name of the company. You don't have to if if, if you can't. Um, I'll say that the customers we've had. It's actually a year and a half old company. One of the biggest challenges with uh, st having your own uh, software or insure tech startup is that the sales cycle in insurance is very long. But we were fortunate to have acquired a customer within. Uh, three months of creating our MVP, and, and those customers have been very, very pleased with our service. Uh, the, the, we see an increase in not just the volume that they use or the, the, the S number of SOVs that they send our way, but now we're starting to see a uh, year in notable differences in the portfolios that they're building because they are more accurately pricing those. So I'd say one of the biggest success stories is the accuracy and efficiency that we, we brought to the table for our clients. Um, and my hope going forward is that uh, if the entire industry, for example, were to use a tool like SOV Wizard to accurately price their risk, then we would diminish the factors that cause hard or soft markets to begin with. Because if everybody was pricing adequately, we would never end up in a hard market. I mean, there's no uh, bad risks, as they say. It's just bad pricing, right? And it's a very interesting perspective. Uh, and I, I do wonder, I, I wish there was research on, on how much of price inadequacy is uh, underwriting competition or uh, cash flow underwriting and, 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 and how much of it is, is incomplete da data. And we most definitely have a lot of incomplete data. Incomplete and I'd say inaccurate. Uh, what, yes, would you say, in what would you say is one of the biggest uh, gaps in pricing or underwriting pricing? If you had to pick at one variable within an SOV or that underwriting data that, that is used to price that risk, uh, would you have a, a, a favorite? I certainly do. No idea. It's the valuations, the, the replacement costs. They are significantly underreported. Um, sometimes I see examples where if something is you know, gonna cost $100 to replace that building or that structure, we see SOVs with, with numbers like 20 or $30. So 70, 80% undervalued, and of course that's gonna have an impact on the accuracy with which you price that risk. Yeah, it, 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 it makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Um, what, kind of the last question, what, 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 is, what is next for, 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 for the software uh, that, that you can speak about already? Sure. We're working on uh, building our underwriting wizard right now, and the hope is that this will evolve not just into an exchange system to, to trade SOVs between underwriters and our offshore wizards, but that it could evolve into a policy management system so that insurers don't have to, work to you know, deal with eight different vendors to fulfill their needs. They can come to us as, as one central place to be able to, to solve their problems from start to finish. Um, where we've started, and with a lot of thought put into it, is that first step of an underwriting uh, is, is where the raw data comes in, you clean it up before you can model it, price the risk. But then there are several steps in the insurance workflow that come after. And slowly we want to work on to integrate uh, other tools that, we're, that are gonna be interconnected with SOV wizard and underwriting wizard. Um, hopefully we get to that point in the next four or five years where we can say we have a claims wizard and we can handle everything from start to finish about claims as well. Okay, awesome. 
Uh, Vivek, thank you so much for, for, for your time. Uh, exciting stuff. Uh, like I said before, uh, definitely a fan of, of tools created by us <laughs> since we understand what the, what the real problems are. Uh, looking forward to, to see you and your team at ITC. Likewise, Tony. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.